are you? How far? Yo, Joes. Hello, soldier. Today's spotlight is for a very special member of the Joe fandom. There are Joe fans, and then there's Carson from 3D Joes. He's the creator of collecting the art of G.I. Joe softcovers, the soon-to-be-released epic hardcover version, 3D Joes, the ultimate online G.I. Joe resource, and now Operation Recall, a new 3 3 quarter inch figure line designed by the creative forces behind G.I. Joe, a real American hero. For people who want figures that recapture that genuine old-school O-ring magic. Who wouldn't? It just successfully funded on Kickstarter and is starting a backer kit to help fund the rest of the yet-to-be-unlocked figures. Carson's a big inspiration and stoked the flames of my passion for G.I. Joe greater than it already was. And one character in particular he's given me a new appreciation for is his favorite character. So this one's for you, Carson. We're looking at Lieutenant Vincent Falcone today. Codename... Falcon. I know the story, but go ahead. So I know there are some G.I. Joe fans out there who groan when they hear about Falcon. Come again? Hear me out. I was certainly conflicted about the guy at one time thanks to his portrayal in G.I. Joe the movie, which was released in 1987, the same year as his first figure. In the movie, he's a punk, plain and simple. But worse, he's an idiot. Falcon, you idiot! And that's not name calling. When Duke calls you an idiot, that's a fact. The very first thing we see him do is get duped by Zorana. That's all right. Everybody likes to look at pretty girls. He's way too touchy-feely anytime he's around women, and he's just way too brash and arrogant without the experience and accomplishments to back it up. Straight up, I didn't like the 87 Joe movie. None of us did. No, there's a lot who love it, and that's cool. Don't let anyone disrespect you for it if you love it. But the best I can do is enjoy parts of the Joe movie. It's a slog to sit through from start to finish for me. And one of my biggest issues is the portrayal of Falcon. It tarnished my opinion of the character for a long time, until I got to talk to Carson about who the character was intended to be. You see, having a punk and a screw-up who comes of age and earns his stripes is fine. Worked great for Hot Rod and Transformers. The problem is, Hot Rod wasn't a Green Beret. If you want a putz who redeems himself in the end, how about Crazy Legs, or Fast Draw, or Psych Out, or Sneak Peek as the star of the movie? but a green beret doesn't have far to climb because they're already at the top. If you want to know what the green beret are or United States Army Special Forces, they're pretty much what G.I. Joe is to the army, specializing in unconventional warfare. They're the elite in combat, search and rescue, counter narcotics, hostage situations, humanitarian aid, peacekeeping, and manhunts. Thank you, sir. And have impeccable manners. Thank you, sir. The Ballad of the Green Beret sums them up perfectly. Silver wings upon their chest. These are men, America's best. One hundred men will test today, but only three win the Green Beret. Affirmative. So how in the blue hay did an industrial strength foul up, like the guy in the movie, become a Green Beret? You're here because you're an industrial strength foul up! Makes no sense to me. What's your problem? Look, I've got nothing against Don Johnson. Great actor. Awesome as Sonny Crockett on Miami Vice. He was good as Falcon. But not good enough. Okay, I'll tell you what we do. Have him play Chuckles in the movie. Why is Chuckles a mute Hulk? He's supposed to be an undercover specialist. He should be a smooth and smarmy, well, Sonny Crockett type of character. I think we can handle it. I mean, look at this guy. Tell me he couldn't play a perfect live action Chuckles let alone voice the animated version. I always wished Falcon was more like Flint. I never thought I'd be glad to see you show up, Falcon. A confident, booming, John Wayne type of character. It's what he wanted, and that's what he's gonna get. So, here's a little bit of armchair directing and editing for you. He had already passed away well before the G.I. Joe movie came out, but here's a glimpse at the voice I think of when I see Lieutenant Falcon. Yep, the Duke himself. Hold it right there! No, not Duke. The Duke. Marion Robert Morrison. Oh, you probably know him better as John Wayne. Be my guest. Who just happened to make a movie in 1968 called The Green Beret, where he directed and starred as Colonel Mike Kirby. The brave man of the Green Beret. 
original Lieutenant Falcon figure was released in 1987, and I loved it. Swing her around 180 degrees! It was a return to form. He went right alongside figures of the past that I never got a chance to get, like Stalker, and figures I did have, like Ripcord. Great camo, the handkerchief around the neck, a backpack that had a lot going for a Joe in 87, a removable antenna, how many of these got broken? That's normal. Well, not this one. This is my original Falcon from childhood. Thanks, Mom and Dad. And his weapons of choice were a Bowie knife, which could be carried in the backpack, and a pump-action shotgun. Thanks, Doc. I always thought it was an odd choice for a Green Beret, being a much more short-range and less precise weapon than a standard rifle with a scope. But the raw, brute force of a shotgun does give him a flintness about him. Besides, it sings. The file card reads, Code name, Falcon, Green Beret. File name, Falcone, or Falcone, Vincent R. Primary military specialty, infantry. Secondary military specialty, medic. Birthplace, Fayetteville, North Carolina. Grade O2, first lieutenant. And the bio reads, Lieutenant Falcon is a second generation Green Beret. His father having served with the 10th SFGA, Special Forces Group Airborne, from its very beginnings at Fort Bragg's Smoke Bomb Hill. Falcon was cross-trained in demolitions and served briefly with the 5th SFGA Blue Light Counter-Terrorist Unit as an A-Team XO. He is proficient in Spanish, French, Arabic, and Swahili, and a qualified expert with most NATO and Warsaw Pact small arms. And the quote reads, Green Berets are specialists in training and leading native insurgents. Native insurgents are usually primitive tribal peoples who respond to two types of leadership. You can bully and overwhelm them with superior firepower and technology, or you can bite the head off a snake, chug a lug the local beverage, and yell, Follow me! Falcon is a snake biter if I ever saw one. His lone animated appearance in the original series was in the 87 movie, and since this is a tribute video rather than a hit piece, I'll just say eventually Falcon overcomes Serpentor and Galobulus and saves the day. It's revealed that he's Duke's half-brother, although the character was originally intended to be either the son or younger brother of Hawk, hence the bird code name. He was played by Don Johnson in the movie as I mentioned, and I didn't know who could have been more fitting until I saw this comment from channel panel member 80s Toy Nostalgia. The answer was right there under my nose. My name is General Clayton Abernathy, perhaps you've heard of me. Dennis Quaid who played Hawk in the first G.I. Joe live-action movie. Yeah, that was my last job. I didn't think much of that movie, but I thought Quaid's casting as Hawk was perfect. He even looks like the original card art for Hawk. He's always exhibited a John Wayne-ness about him, and would have been perfect as G.I. Joe's Snake Eater in 87. Knowing is half the battle. I like the way you talk. If the animated incarnation wasn't your cup of tea, it was Larry Hama to the rescue, as usual, with the Real American Hero Marvel comic. How is it? Much more fitting for a Green Beret. Falcon's first appearance was in issue 60. He's just a good soldier. No attitude or brattiness. And he leads a recon team during the Cobra Civil War, spanning issues 73 to 77. He doesn't really stand out, no more than Hawk, Duke, or Flint. He's just a competent soldier who doesn't question his superiors. He gets the job done in true Green Beret fashion, and with an optimistic attitude, no less. That's pretty positive. Other notable appearances include Special Missions 26, where he witnesses the death of a number of October Guard members, and Real American Hero Issue 109, where he witnesses the killing of several G.I. Joe members. Well, I'm sorry to hear that, soldier. In true Charlie Mike fashion, Falcon urges the team to continue mission, shrugging off being shot in the arm and refusing help, urging Cross Country and Duke to help the others instead of himself. This is Falcon! G.I. Joe will be right back! He made his return to animation in the Deke series in 1991. If you weren't a fan of his portrayal in the G.I. Joe movie, you might want to skip this series. What do you mean? Well, he becomes a drug addict. That's why you've been messing up. You're on drugs! It's an important story, and can be an effective one with the right character. But why pick the Green Beret again? Why not rock and roll, or psych out? Or go big and make it Hawk himself? Someone who has far to fall and much to lose to the danger of drug addiction. Not the guy who a lot of fans already have a very low opinion of because of the movie. Unfortunately, he didn't make any appearances in any of the other animated series or movies like Resolute or Renegades, 
or any of the live action movies. He does pop up in the Devil's Due continuity though. After leaving the Joe team, he works as a military consultant for Hollywood Productions to add an air of authenticity. Sort of like Larry Hama and Buzz Dixon did for G.I. Joe. There have been quite a few Falcon figures after the initial 87 one though. Oh, the first one's easy. The second one that's hard to get him to make. There are a lot more than just two. How many of them were there? Eleven released so far, I believe. The original mold got a repaint in 88 as a Night Force figure. Then again in 92 as a supersonic fighter. Then again in 2003 as part of the Operation Anaconda box set convention exclusive. A modern 4-inch version of the original design was released in 2008's 25th anniversary line in a comic 2-pack with Nemesis Enforcer, or Nemesis Immortal, a direct-to-consumer version in 2009, a modern Slaughter's Marauders version in 2011 as part of the Slaughter's Marauders battle set. Holy lord! You said it, Norm. In 2012, Sideshow, who had been doing 12-inch highly detailed G.I. Joe figures, did a Falcon figure as their San Diego Comic-Con exclusive that year. Look at all the stuff it came with. And two different heads. It's the ultimate Falcon figure. Affirmative. And a mint in boxed one just sold on eBay for $200. That's much lower than I thought they'd be going for. Got any more of them? A club exclusive Night Force version in 2014, and an even more Night Force looking version in 2016 in a Special Forces 3 pack. And the other one? Oh, yeah, one more club exclusive in 2018. A modern version of the Supersonic Fighters outfit. Bring us up to date. Hasbro recently showed a digital render of the new 6 inch figure for the classified line. Well, there it is. Yep, there it is. What do you think? It's perfect. Thank you. Hope you enjoyed this in-depth look at G.I. Joe's Quiet Professional. And a personal message to Carson. You're what this is all about. Thank you for your Art of G.I. Joe books, for 3D Joes, and for Operation Recall. I wish I could put all the dough behind it that you needed, but since that's not a reality, I'll say thanks with my time and this tribute to your favorite character and offer these words of encouragement. I believe in you. You accomplish great things, and I believe you'll continue to carry on accomplishing great things thanks to your focus, self-confidence, and good old-fashioned hard work and sacrifice. Carry on. You're three out of a hundred, my friend. A quiet professional and the Green Beret of G.I. Joe fans. If you want to support Operation Recall, you can back the attack on Backer Kit. How far? All the way! Check the link in the video description. I also think we better get moving. Thanks for watching. Leave a thought in the comment spot and to join the tribe, hit subscribe. I sure will. Let's roll. Move out. Happy